I'm glad you're surviving out there. Mega Strain is running loose. He's causing havoc everywhere. Anyhow, we were talking about stresses, and we were talking about the stresses acting at one particular point. And we said we wanted to find the maximum in some arbitrary direction. And so we did that, and uh, what do we call this stress, the maximum stress in an arbitrary direction? Well, we call them principal stresses. So when we define principal stresses, these are the maximum and minimum stresses that this block experiences. We want to solve for the maximum normal stresses that this block experiences because that can give us some indication on whether or not this point or this element is going to fail under the loads that are being applied. All right, so let's go ahead and write that formula. Again, the principal stresses represent the maximum and minimum normal stress that a block or an element will experience. We call these principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2. As it happens on the rotation in which we have our principal stresses, there is no shear stress. So we say that tau 1, 2 equals 0 and that there's no shear on the principal plane. I just want to recap once more why we're calculating, uh, why we want to calculate sigma 1 and sigma 2. So there are certain failure theories out there that require us to determine the principal stresses because the principal stresses are the maximum normal stresses that the block experiences. And if these maximum normal stresses are not in the xy plane that we are looking at our problem uh, with that, that certain coordinate system, then we need to figure out the rotation to the principal plane so that we can know how uh, the material will fail. And we also want to figure out what these principal stress values are just to determine mathematically whether or not we will expect failure. So how do we determine mathematically the principal stresses? We take the sigma x prime equation that we had and we want to maximize or minimize it. This means taking a derivative and setting, setting it equal to zero. So you see here I'm just taking d sigma x prime uh, with respect to uh, d theta and doing the derivative of our sigma x prime equation. We can go through this and we can now solve for theta p. Once we solve for theta p, we will find that the solution indicates that uh, the maximum and minimum occur when the tangent of 2 theta p equals tau xy divided by the quantity of sigma x minus sigma y over 2. If we solve for theta p, we will get two potential roots to this equation. And we find that there's a relationship between the two roots such that theta p 2 equals theta p1 plus 90 degrees. And this makes sense. I, in the sketch we drew at the top of the page, we had sigma 1 and sigma 2. They are oriented 90 degrees from one another, and so they represent the two principal planes of our element. We can now take the results for theta p1 and theta p2 and plug them back into our sigma x prime equation. And this will now give us our equation for the principal stresses. So we see that the principal stresses, sigma 1 and 2, equals sigma x plus sigma y over 2, plus or minus the square root of sigma x minus sigma y over 2 squared, plus tau xy squared. All right, so this just involves a little bit of math. Uh, I hope you were able to follow, though, that uh, we took the derivative of the sigma x prime equation, set it equal to zero, solved for theta p, and then that allowed us to solve for sigma 1 and sigma 2. 
We can also take the results from theta p and plug them into our tau x prime y prime equation. And this would uh, prove that tau x prime y prime has to equal zero on the principal plane. Great, you still, you're still doing okay. We also need to find the max shear stress, okay? Um, so in addition to the maximum normal stresses and maximum minimum normal stresses that we call principal stresses, we will want to know the maximum shear stress because the maximum shear stress uh, on some criterion will also help us determine whether or not failure is going to occur at this point. So let's go ahead and figure out what the max shear stress is for this element. To solve for the maximum shear stress, we follow a similar procedure as was done for principal stresses. So I'll draw a sketch of the rotated block on which we have applied the maximum shear stress. We will find that this rotation still has normal stresses applied, and the normal stress magnitude is what I call sigma average, where sigma average equals sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 or the average of the x and y applied stresses. To find the maximum shear stress, we take the derivative of the tau x prime y prime equation with respect to theta, and we set that equal to zero. This will allow us to solve for theta, the theta to the maximum shear plane. The resulting formula is that tangent of 2 theta s equals negative quantity of sigma x minus sigma y over 2 divided by tau xy. And so we can then, uh, we know sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy typically, so we would be able to solve for theta s. This would give us the rotation from our xy plane to the maximum shear plane. That's what theta s represents. We can then take the results for theta s and plug it into our tau x prime y prime equation, and this will yield the maximum and minimum shear stresses occurring on our element. I'll go ahead and add a few notes here. Just like last time, we see that the shear, the two planes of maximum shear, or min max and minimum shear, uh, are separated by 90 degrees. And they also have a relationship to the principal planes uh, that they are rotated 45 degrees from the principal planes. Okay, so we'll take our result for theta s and plug it into the tau x prime y prime equation. And this gives us that tau max equals plus or minus the square root of sigma x minus sigma y over 2 quantity squared plus tau xy squared. I think we have all the tools we need uh, to go ahead and start solving some of these engineering problems. I'm going to hand uh, the all-stress cube back to you. Keep it safe. We'll be in touch soon.